G'day guys and gal. The Horus Heresy is generally considered to be the shittest time to be an Imperial citizen. Half the demigods sworn to protect you had begun to suck off the demons of hell, literally and metaphorically, whilst the Emperor of Mankind, the closest thing you have to a deity, got turned into a vegetabilized lithium iron battery. Oh yeah, and nearly 5 trillion people died, which is, uh, yeah, that's a lot. Overall, bit of a bad time. Would not recommend. But did you know that there was another era that was just as bad, if not worse? The lowest point humanity had reached since the Age of Strife, a time where corruption, murder, and insanity gripped every planet within the Imperium. The Age of Apostasy. This shitty time officially went for around 100 years, but its prelude and legacy extended much further. You could genuinely say that the full might of chaos during the Horus Heresy did less damage to the Imperium than the Age of Apostasy. Some people might disagree with you, but hey, fuck those guys. Before we get into it, I have something uh, sick to show you. I recently worked with an artist called Nicolas Thiesolosos, yeah, he's very Greek, to create this absolute masterpiece actually gives me goosebumps. It's a scene from um, Battle Mace 40 Million where uh, Shlaman Kar is solo fighting a swarm of terror, terrifying uh, space bugs of death. There was no art of it out there despite being a badass moment from the lore, so I had it made and I was so impressed with it that I've decided to have it printed on canvas and now this could be yours. I'm auctioning off this piece on the Major Kill website. It's one of a kind and it will never be replicated to this size. Like you would need the raw file to be able to print it this big at this quality, which only I and Nicholas have. In saying that, if you just want a still decently sized high quality print or canvas of this, that can be arranged. To get either of those options, simply send 65 euro for the canvas or 53 euro for the print to Nicholas Chan 1986 at outlook.com.gr on PayPal which is the artist's PayPal. Once you've done that, message me on Discord with a screenshot of the payment, as well as your name, address, phone number, and all that other details, and bam, the sickest Battle Mace 40 million artwork will be shipped to your doorstep. Due to the fact that I'm not the one sending these out, I can't sell them through the Major Kill website, but you have my absolute assurance that Nicholas is reliable. Absolutely unreal artwork. Whoever wins the auction for this big boy will get my signature on it and we'll jump on a call and we'll talk shit about it and you know, talk about the Easter eggs and stuff hidden within it. Today we'll talk about the Age of Apostasy, covering topics such as the Reign of Blood, Georges Vandyre, the origins of the Sisters of Battle, as well as the Plague of Unbelief. Yeah, a lot happened during the Age of Apostasy and not much of it was nice. Let's get into it. When people hear about the Age of Apop, they usually just think about Mr. Vandyre that dick, and his tyrannical reign, but there's a lot more to it than that. See, for a batshit insane man to take control of the Imperium and do batshit insane things for nearly a century, something has to be pretty fucking wrong. Ironically, the thing that was going wrong was that the Imperium had gotten too safe and comfortable. The Tyranids and Necrons weren't a thing yet, the War of the Beast was a distant memory, and Chaos was still reeling from the Horus Heresy. The Imperium needed a big bad guy to fight, but there was just none. So the Imperium decided to fight itself. <laughs> These dipshits, man, I swear to God. From the 34th to the 36th millennium, when the Imperium didn't have problems or Primarchs floating about, the Adeptus Ministorum, who are those weird religious ecclesiarch dudes, and the Adeptus Administratum, who literally run the Imperium, both vied for control. Sometimes the Ministorum would be in power, and then sometimes the Administratum would take power. Both sides were very petty and constantly sabotaged and killed each other. It got to a point where the Ministorum was like, fuck this, I'm out. They packed up their holy tax-exempt palace and moved it to a distant world. From here the Ecclesiarchy became a faction in its own right, raising huge zealous armies and being a huge pain in the ass to any Imperial citizen unlucky enough to encounter them. If it wasn't clear by now, all of this was just a big dick-swinging contest between the top dogs of the Ecclesiarchy and the Administratum. Whilst the Ecclesiarchy did gain a lot of power, they were not on the throne world, hence their leader declared that they would once again pack up and head back to Terra. No one wanted to do this, because holy fuck moving that much shit across 10,000 light years is a huge effort, and the resources required to manage it would result in millions of deaths. But no one can stop the swing of an egomaniac's dick, hence the Adeptus Ministorum returned to Terra. 
broke after the intense effort of getting home and their leader was assassinated. Hard to know who did it, but considering how much everyone hated him by that point, it's really no shocker. Now during that 2000 years of relative peace and quiet, the Imperium could have fortified itself, amass wealth and launch crusades, but instead it just blew a ton of cash on random spiritual bullshit and alienated the Astartes and the Mechanicus from the High Lords. Hence when a shitload of random warp storms appeared everywhere and started licking everyone's tits, the Imperium was not prepared. Sensing the weakness of mankind, orc attacks and Dark Eldar raids exploded, whilst various chaotic warbands strode forth from the Eye of Terror and began causing problems as well. I mean problems is a very light way to put it, but you know what I mean. It was disastrous. Thousands of worlds collapsed into anarchy as countless Imperial citizens killed themselves and each other in twisted acts of penance. From this bowl of what can only be described as moldy ramen sprinkled with fungal infested toenails, a man would rise. Georges Vandaya. Georges was a smart, charismatic man who rose to the top of the Adeptus Administratum through sheer ruthlessness. Due to the Ministorum being broke and everyone being pissed off at them for their antics in the previous millenniums, Georges was able to put his own puppet into position as the head ecclesiarch. He then executed said puppet because the puppet was a degenerate, before claiming the role of ecclesiarch and master of the Administratum. Through a few more slick outplays, like murdering half the Ministorum and replacing them with a bunch of simps, as well as removing the leader of the Adeptus Astra Telepathicus psychic abilities and then blackmailing him into submission, George was able to take almost complete control of the Imperium. I say almost, as the Mechanicus and the Astartes were like, fuck that shit, and kept themselves busy attempting to hold off the problematic Chaos and Xeno incursions. With his power achieved, Vandaya suddenly just went batshit insane, like, very spontaneously, and it didn't appear to be because of Chaos or other shit. I mean, I'm sure Chaos was loving it and found the whole thing hilarious, but there was no sign of corruption or demons or anything like that. The dude was just a massive asshole. Van Dyer became paranoid and angry, lashing out at his followers and ordering exterminatus of entire worlds just because he struggled to pronounce their name. Actually, I feel you on that one, buddy. Everyone went along with it because they were so scared of him, plus the Imperium was fucked anyway, so who cared? Despite Van Dyer's insanity, he was still a man, and men get horny. Hence, when he heard about a sect of highly religious warrior women called the Daughters of the Emperor, he just had to go visit. When he arrived, they told him to get fucked. Now telling Vandai to get fucked would usually result in your planet getting destroyed, but he was so horny that instead of losing his shit, he politely understood their point of view and ordered one of his men to shoot him. The man nervously complied and the bullet was blocked by what appeared to be divine intervention. In reality, it was Vandai's super advanced special deflector field, but the daughters of the Emperor weren't exactly tech savvy, so they thought it was a sign from the Emperor. Hence Vandai brought them back to Terra, gave them power armor, and made them his bodyguard. He also fucked them. Like, a lot. That's not me trying to be sexual and shit, like, he straight up plowed the ever-living shit out of them, and probably claimed it was the will of the Emperor or something. After all, he did change their name from the Daughters of the Emperor to Brides of the Emperor, which is a, uh, bit of a creepy transition. For the next 70 years, Vandai ruled. Thousands more Imperial worlds fell to his temper tantrums, whilst his naive all-female bodyguard protected him from various attempts on his life. These 70 years were called the Reign of Blood, because goddamn, having that many chicks around you all the time would really teach you about menstruation. All bad things must come to an end, however. Hence, on a distant world, a humble man with divine purpose would rise. Sebastian Thor. Seb, as I call him, was a chiller. He didn't seek power or fortune, but he also wasn't super down with the whole reign of blood, hence spoke out about Vandaya and how much of a dick he was. Vandaya, that dick, didn't like getting called a dick, hence sent assassin after assassin to go clap Seb. The funny part is that when each assassin arrived, they were so inspired by Seb that they joined him, then they used their assassin skills to stop future assassins. So after a few years, Seb had this full fucking guild of random assassins protecting him from assassinations. Seb's legend grew, and various cardinals and factions that had gone into hiding when Vandai ascended to High Lord came out to support him. Even the Astartes and the Mechanicus, who had spent nearly 100 years avoiding whatever the fuck was going on with the Imperium, started voicing their support for Seb, and they condemned Vandai. Vandai panicked, and he dissolved the High Lords, making himself the one and only official leader of the Imperium. However, this was basically just a title at this point. He finally lost his few remaining supporters when he ordered the Imperial Navy to attack the Mechanicus and the Astartes. The Imperial Navy was like, 
Hmm, interesting proposition. How about no? Hence it was literally just Vandaya and his army of bolter bitches held up in his palace. To end his reign, the Imperial Fists, Firehawks, Soul Drinkers and Black Templars joined up with a large Mechanicus fleet and beeline for Terra. They began their siege of the Ecclesiarchal Palace, but found the resistance from the Brides of the Emperor to be unexpectedly strong. Like they were gonna win eventually, but it would have cost a lot of Astarte lives, hence they reached out to the Custodes. During the Reign of Blood, the Custodes had given even less fucks than the Space Marines. Their job was to protect the Emperor, not the Imperium. But when the Custodes were informed of what was actually happening, they were like, ah yeah shit, that's, uh, that's not good. The Custodes used a secret passageway to reach the palace, but they were stopped by the sisters. The Custodes were like, Hey chicka babes, we are the Emperor's literal golden angels. Georges Vandai is a horny dickhead. Let's go kill him. And the brides, led by the legendary Alicia Dominica, were like, No. And the Custodes were like, What do you mean no? We literally speak with the Emperor's will. And the sisters replied, No. It's actually pretty impressive the amount of restraint the Custody showed in not mowing them all down right there and then. The exasperated Custody was then like, ah, all right, fuck it, come with me. And he led the brides to the Emperor himself. It's not clear what the Emperor said to Alicia and her bodyguards, but it was probably along the lines of, bitch, just fucking listen to the Custodes. Do you know how difficult it is for me to communicate with people as a fucking skeletal battery? Go kill George and fuck off. Hence with the orders from their literal god, the brides of the emperor went back to Georges and cut his head off with a power sword, hence ending the reign of blood. With Georges gone, Seb took command of the ecclesiarchy and basically undid all the reforms and shit decisions of Vandaya over the last century. The high lords were reinstated, whilst the adeptus ministorum and the administratum were reformed back into their normal places. Seb also declared that the ecclesiarchy could never again have men under arms. That only applied to men though, hence the Brides of the Emperor were reformed into the Adeptus Sororitas and they became the Chamber Militant of the Ecclesiarchy. To prevent another Vandire from rising, the Inquisition created the Ordo Hereticus, whose job was to prevent uppity dickheads from ruining everything in the Imperium, and they also made the Ordo Sicarius, whose job was to make sure that the Officino Assassinorum didn't go rogue and just assassinate whoever they felt like it. Fuck, I'm actually getting really good at these pronunciations. The cool part about the Age of Apostasy was that this was one of the first times that the Emperor intervened with shit since the Horus Heresy. When Seb was rising to power, Georges sent a huge army to destroy his world, but a random warp storm appeared and it destroyed Georges' army. Coincidence? I think not. And neither does the Imperium, as the warp storm is now called the Emperor's Wrath. Likewise, the Emperor communicating with Alicia to stop Georges was also a bit of a thing. It seems as if Seb was directly blessed and protected by the Emperor so that he could save the Imperium. Whilst all that shit with Seb had been happening, a really fucking random uprising occurred in the corner of the galaxy. Some Cardinal declared himself leader of the Imperium and voice of the Emperor. As that pocket of the Imperium was cut off from the rest of the galaxy by warp storms, it kinda had this like echo chamber effect. He took over dozens of planets and he appeared to be unstoppable until the dipshit attacked Fenris and lost most of his army. To make matters worse, people were really fucking sick and tired of shitty leaders. Hence all the planets he took rebelled against him and he ended up being torn to shreds by the people he oppressed. That's a condensed version of the Plague of Unbelief, which uh, yeah, very random and unkind of unnecessary part of the lore, but we'll allow it. With the end of the Plague of Unbelief came the end of the Age of Apostasy. The Imperium's darkest era was over. The best part about it is, is that Chaos had very little to do with it. As you guys and gals know, I'm kinda sick of Chaos always being the cause of all problems, so it's refreshing to read parts of the lore where terrible things happen, not because some dude praises Slanesh then rubs a cheese grater on his balls, but because a very, very horny man named Georges Vandire clawed his way to the top. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to some hectic, uh, conflict dagger hentai and five dollars gets you access to the mage kill sticker that will be sent out for free in the next week or so hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more menstrual content join the discord for more memes and i'll see you in the next one peace